Hey guys, Frontwoods Farmer. Welcome. Oh, oh. I don't want to show you that yet. As you guys know, we've been putting together a machine shop. And I got two new additions to show you. The one we may sell to fund uh, the machine shop funds. And uh, the other one we're going to keep because we've been looking for one for a while now. So let me go show you what we got. Okay, so we picked these two up at a local auction. And the money that I paid for both machines with tooling, the tooling is worth probably how many times more than that. Uh, I paid for all this with tax and fees, $209. This is a Sibley Camelback drill press. You know, so you have a lot of range of motion down here. It takes a really big uh, Morse taper and it's quill. It came with all these reamers, uh, these Jacobs chucks, these vice hold downs to hold your material. I also got this Lodge and Shipley metal shear. So this is the one that I'm probably going to sell. It only does 10 gauge, which is still a thicker metal, but we don't really do that much custom fabrication where we would need something like that. So we're probably going to keep this. This is time correct. It's a more industrial uh, camelback press, so it's more usable as well. So it's not something that's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty stout just to kind of give you a look real quick at it. We got this from Upper St. Clair, PA, which is a uh, really nice part of town. So if any of you PA watchers are watching us right now, you'd be shocked to hear me say the area I got this from. And I'll give you guys all a quick view of the Lodge and Shipley shear. It's in really good shape. The counterweight area is in here. So I'm gonna get this all offloaded. and put it into the machine shop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these binders off a certain way. I have it winched here, choked each way this way, and the base's footprint is wobbly that way. So front to back, it's not gonna go front to back. We also had it tied down at four points. So I'm gonna take my four points off and then it should be, it'll be fine. And before I take the two choke points off, we're gonna cinch it from the top in case it would tip. You'll see now a real interesting thing as we get this unloaded of how the previous owner showed me what he did is he put actual timbers cribbing through there and hooked it up with the forks and something I would have never thought of. So what we're going to do is cinch it from the top, set it down with the backhoe and then we're going to get the high lift with the forks to set it into place. I'll give it to you and then just pull it all the way down. Or yeah, you can hold it to that. Actually, it's more. Maybe it's probably less slack. Kind of help me feed it through there. I'll pull a little so watch your fingers, but I won't pull hard. Is it stuck? Yeah. Can you lift it up? Just lift it. Yeah, 
do all this stuff in this big equipment sled because get real hurt if you got you know, like a horizontal mill that fell. It happens. You get it too quick. Hmm. So now that we got it like this, we can, like I said, we could cinch it from the top of the back and then we could take these chains off. Right. So before I rig that up, I don't know if you guys see me fooling around in the machine and I dropped that pin in. Basically on a uh, backhoe like that, you have a couple of different pivot points. One with the, uh, a lot of people call, which is the stick, refer to it as the dipper, and then the boom, that's the main part. Well, the main part's so heavy that when you have that amount of weight, you can lock the boom uh, with a piece of metal mechanically. So that's what I did. So now I can't go up and down, but I can lift my dipper up and down and still go sideways with the stick. So that's what I did there, if you were wondering. So.
Okay, as you guys can see, this is what I mean when you're working with this unstable, like real heavy machines. So safety's everything so someone don't get hurt or worse. We have it secured up top. It's not perfect to where I want it on this left side here, but it's probably as good as I can get it. I don't like it that close to that guide, but I believe once I lift it up, it should be okay. So I'm gonna lift that up. Obviously that right side chain there, it's a little loose. So it's probably gonna do something like this, which is all right. To extend the hoe once it gets lifted up. We have to extend the hoe pushed out. We're gonna pull it in for our center of gravity for our rigging and let's see how it goes. So that couldn't have went really any better. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the trailer and the shear out of the way, and then I'm gonna bring the high lift in, and that's where you're gonna see the interesting rigging that the guy that I bought it off of showed me. And you could just see next to this machine how big this really is. I mean, it's, it's hard to take in on the trailer. This is a really big drill press. Now I got all my obstacles out of the way. We're gonna go get the high lift with the forks, and I'm gonna show you how we pick this up. So basically what we're gonna do, see us, we're carrying two logs, and uh, what we're gonna do, get away, is uh, get away harder off us. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick those in between the camel hump, and then we're gonna fork and pick it up like that by its head, it's really neat. guys are moving one of these now the only thing I don't like about this is where this can keep wedging that chain So as you can tell, now that it's in the shop, I mean, this thing's real stuffed. They said it was seven feet. It's actually nine. So I planned on putting it in that corner 
but now I'm gonna have to find a new space for it in the barn. It's gonna have to stay in the main part. So we're gonna end up doing this welding table I planned on putting casters on. I'm probably gonna leave it over here though and then slide that straight back or put it where this 454 Chevy engine is. But now we got it in. Once I get this all unloaded, we'll, uh, we'll take another look. So I had a little bit of a detour, fork in the road if you'd say, got deterred. Um, yeah, the family wanted to go out to dinner and I never do that stuff. But here it is sitting in its almost new home. I think I'm going to slide it against the wall. Now I'm about 5'8", and, and this is where this thing comes up to me. This is like my eye level. So as you guys can see, this is just a massive, I can't even get the whole thing in here. Let me keep going back. Massive pre uh, drill press. Uh, it's a Sibley. Uh, when you look online, it's strange. It's a uh, D24 to D28. It's like it's got two models. But that is what it is. I'll probably clean up these brass tags. Uh, figure out what kind of switch is. Like, I get into all that. So, like, all the switches, like, everything, what the brands are. It's Remy. They're massive. It's a little late. We're gonna take her out. Uh, so I haven't figured everything out yet, so I don't want to be showing you guys this, but I, I figured this out tonight. So this will bring your quill up and down at a more rapid uh, rate. Here's all your inches. And then whenever you wanna get to where you are, it's hard to do with one hand. You gotta kind of turn this. Okay, so there you go. So when you get it set, you know, close to your piece, this brings us down really slow. So you could drill nice and easy, figure that out. Uh, it does have a 440 volt motor, but this one is 223 phase switchable. So you go between the voltages of 220 and 440, but that is still three phase. So it's good and bad. We will still need a converter. I'm not switching another motor out to single phase like we're doing the lathe right now. I'm doing a video of that right now. I'll show you the lathe. There's a good buddy of mine. Give me a bench grinder here. Probably do a video on all this stuff because I'm just now getting the machine shop in order. It's more than it was. Old Delta bench grinder. Cincinnati number two mil. Right here is our lathe. Switch that motor out to single phase from three. I'm, I'm currently working on the video right now. But what I notice, if you guys are from the Pittsburgh area, this is our Burke. Nope, Burke number four mil. See that Traner manufacturing? I always thought this was a Traner. Traner is actually a company that was a machine company that sold all this stuff in Pittsburgh. And I'd love to know a little more information about that if any of you guys are from Pittsburgh region. Uh, we got this Burke mill really neat little horizontal mill on this little pipe stand and they had wood and everything on it i actually found for a hundred dollars the same stand that it belongs to down in west virginia so we went down there and we got it from a guy who owned a pretty uh, large family machine shop and uh this is a nice little mill we only paid a hundred for the mill this is a logan number 200 or yeah logan 200 lathe and this is like more of a precision lathe and I'm just fooling around with stuff in here right now. But so this is a little update on the machine shop for you guys that follow. If you don't subscribe, hit the subscribe button and bell notification next to the subscribe button because you'll really enjoy these videos. A few things we've made, hammer holders. Yeah, getting back to the Sibley, it's just a like a monstrosity of a drill press. It's really neat. This is how you engage and disengage uh, the quill your drive this is your two-speed for your drive so i do know a little bit about it but not much uh oh let's go to the tool and we'll see what we got this is just a massive look next to my hand massive morse taper so this is what the quilt takes let me go look because i thought it was even oh um, yeah that's it it's not the bigger one so yeah that that's a massive morse taper adapter and I think we had to go through two sizes to get down to, I call it a standard. There's no standard, but, you know, just a, a normal size more stable. comes with all these reamers, uh, hold downs. These are really nice. I'm sure you know what these are. More hold down bolts, T-bolts. More tooling, lots of tooling. I didn't even empty all this out now. So, yeah, if you guys ain't subscribed to the channel, 
you like what you've seen, you want to see more, this machine shop's just getting built. This was actually a temporary location, but we'll see. Uh, hit subscribe, like my video, share, comment, and if you're from the Pittsburgh area, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.